A group of heavily armed Muslim extremists are now in custody in New Mexico. Officials saying there are that five adults, including the two men you see on your screen, are facing child abuse charges after authorities discovered they were hiding 11 children, children between the ages of 1 and 15 in a remote compound. The local sheriff describes it as the saddest living conditions and poverty he's ever seen, with the kids having only dirty rags for clothing amid other horrifying details. They were starving. Joining us now uh, with more is Monique Jacobs, Cabinet Secretary for New Mexico's Children, Youth, and Families Department. Monique, I read this this morning. I, I just I took my breath away. Tell us what you know. So it's certainly heartbreaking. Um, the children are in our custody now. And, you know, our focus has been and will continue to be really the safety and well-being of these children. What do they look like? So, you know, we can't ever really talk specifically about, about the actual now, children that we're their, working their with in this case. Well, there's just their condition. But, I mean, it was written about that they were starved, that they were, they were deprived of water, uh, basic sanitation, uh, no education. Uh, you can't confirm or deny any of these details. I think the American people want to know about this. It's that horrific. Certainly. So I can tell you that what we do in a situation like this, the very first thing that we do is, is really make sure that we can get those most basic needs met. So ensure that we're getting the children food, water, that we get them cleaned up and comfortable clothing. And then, of course, we have a lot of, of other assessments that need to occur, medical assessments, you know, making sure that we are doing forensic interviews so we can understand exactly what they know and what's gone on in their, in their living conditions. So we've been working, you know, around the clock to, to get all of this done and, again, really focusing on what we can do to decrease the trauma that these children may have experienced. I can't even. Uh, I mean, you can't. Uh, you, some of these were, we understand, uh, they're related to them, parents, uh, but it's not clear who, who they all were. Some of them were mothers that allowed to, to, to live in this condition, condition, and the child that they were looking for has been abducted by one of the parents, correct? That's, that's my understanding, yes, that that's how they ended up coming to that site. But they never, they've, they've, they've never been, it hasn't been found yet, correct? That's correct. That's not one of the children that, that we have in our custody. Right. Are any of the children saying anything about, you know, you know why, the, why this happened to them, especially the older children? Did they give you any insights yet? So, no, you know, again, in a situation like this, we really, we work with trained forensic interviewers who are, again, trained in, in how to talk to to children and really get them to open up. But we do know oftentimes it will take a good deal of time before children are comfortable enough that, that they will talk to us about what all they have experienced in their life up till now. And do you have any idea how long they've been held in these conditions? Those are all the kinds of questions that we're working to gather information on as, as we speak. All right, well, we got to get more information on this because my viewers want to know, and I know people all across the country are trying to figure out how this happened, who these abductors were, and what, if any, uh, sicko uh, motivation, including religious motivation, there could have been.